Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 Jailbreak News update. Lots of developments happening right now. Of course, we had the big bombshell that was dropped yesterday, if you didn't see my previous video, that the flow just casually dropped a new kernel exploit for the PS4 and PS5, which works up to 13.00 firmware on the PS4 and 12.00 firmware on the PS5. And of course, it's patched in 13.02 on the PS4 and 12.02 on the PS5. So that could allow us to jailbreak much higher firmwares. Of course, it has to be chained with a user land exploit first. And what we learned from that yesterday is that it looks like the Lua exploit and YouTube exploits would not be able to be used to chain with this kernel exploit to use them to jailbreak. So we would be stuck with the Mastercore exploit, the Blu-ray exploit, and the WebKit exploit. And of course, that's not really useful on the PS5 since those exploits were patched on much older firmwares that already have jailbreaks. And as for the PS4, the only real useful one there would be the BD jailbreak. Because of course, Gedgenes Blu-ray exploit for the PS4 does work up to 12.50, so we could chain it with this new kernel exploit from the flow to be able to jailbreak up to 12.50 on the PS4. And I still think that will be the first implementation we will see of this new kernel exploit will likely be chained with that Blu-ray exploit to jailbreak up to 12.50. That is still the most likely option, although we did get a glimmer of hope yesterday as the flow came out and said that his exploit, which he has now officially named Poopsploit. So uh, yeah, bit of a weird name. We have had weird names before with PS4 kernel exploits, but that's probably one of the weirdest names we've had so far for a kernel exploit. But of course the flow created it, so he gets to name it and that is the official name of this exploit now it seems. So he says it's not impossible with Lua or Y2JB, you just need to find a way to increment F count. So it is still technically possible that the Lua exploit or YouTube jailbreak could be used to load this new kernel exploit, but it looks like it will be a lot more difficult and tricky to implement compared to the ones we know will work like the Blu-ray, WebKit and Mastercore exploits. So more than likely, the Blu-ray exploit for PS4 will come out first, which will allow us to jailbreak up to 12.50 on the PS4 with a Blu-ray disc. And then we'll have to see what happens beyond that. Will we get a Lua or YouTube jailbreak implementation eventually? Will some other Blu-ray exploit come out? Because it looks like the Flow has his own private Blu-ray exploit he was using to load this. That will probably work on higher firmwares. So, you know, maybe that will get released at some point. We'll have to wait and see there. But that seems to be the general idea so far with this exploit. We're also seeing constant updates to the YouTube jailbreak project. Now at the time of recording this video, version 1.2 is not fully released yet, but there is a beta version, which is just in the download zero folder here on the GitHub repo. You can see this is where all of the updates are happening. We've now got lots of other JavaScript files besides the main splash.html file that are getting loaded by the exploit. And now when you load it, it will actually display your firmware version in the notification. And it's just a lot faster and more stable than it was previously. You install this version using the same method I showed in my initial video on how to set up the beta version of the YouTube jailbreak. It's the same idea, so you can check out that video. I'll leave it in the description here. But generally, you just need to be running the YouTube application and then connect on FTP and, and then go into the MNT sandbox directory PPSA1650, I think it is or whatever the YouTube title ID is, you go into that folder and then go into the download zero folder, go into all of the directories until you find the splash.html file and you basically replace it with the files from the repo. And then you should also actually right click on the splash.html file and set the file permissions to 444, which will prevent it from getting overwritten. So that's just the quick and dirty version of how you get things set up. If it doesn't let you replace any files in that folder, you'll need to go to the download zero folder and right click on it and set the permissions on that folder first to 777 and tell it to recurse within subdirectories and subfiles. And that will allow you to replace those files in that directory. But that's the general idea on how you get set up with this. It's just faster and more stable than the 1.1 version. But I would recommend just waiting for the full 1.2 version to be released and then just update to that once it's available. So anyway, that's what's been going on there with the YouTube jailbreak. So of course, Netflix has also been looked at as another option to be able to run the jailbreak. So we have this Netflix and hack project that is being worked on by Earth Onion. So Earth Onion is the one behind the YouTube Adblock plugin, which we covered recently on the channel. So we can see here we have the ability to inject custom JavaScript into the Netflix PS5 error screen by intercepting Netflix's request to localhost. 
So as it states here, it uses a man in the middle attack where we can inject and execute our own JavaScript into the error screen. That is how this works and it's supported on firmwares from 5.00 up to 9.00 so far. At least that's what it's been tested on. It may also work on higher firmwares too. Uh, it is not a full user land exploit, I don't believe at this stage, but of course it is a step towards using Netflix as an entry point, just like the YouTube jailbreak in the future. So it's good to see that there. And somebody has even taken the Netflix splash screen and turned it into a little game on the PS5 as well. We also have another game that might be able to be used as an entry point as some kind of future user land exploit, which is Arcade Spirits The New Challengers. The good thing about this game is that unlike the Lua games where they're only available in Japan and they have to be imported into other countries. With this game, it is readily available in most markets. Not only that, but it's pretty cheap. There's a PSN version and a native PS4 and PS5 physical copy as a disc version that you can install. So it would be a much better option than the current Japanese only games that we have to use at the moment for the save game exploit. However, it is important to mention that this game was just name dropped by Geji Nae. There is no code or project for this yet to allow this to be used as some kind of entry point. So just bear that in mind that it's only just been mentioned as a potential game that might be able to be used here. So take that as you will, but if this could be turned into a usable user land exploit, it would be very handy for any future kernel exploits that come out for the PS4 and PS5 that could be potentially loaded using a game save similar to the Lua exploits, but with a much more readily available game. Now we've also seen some new test builds of ETA Hen and Items Flow that are available on the Package Zone Discord server. Again, you just head into that Discord server, go to the ETA Hen public test channel, and in there you will find the pinned section in the top right hand corner. If you select that, you'll find the latest test build of ETA Hen.elf and also the Items Flow package file as well that you can download and install. So this new ETA Hen update has two new features, the ability with the overlays to move them to different corners of the screen. So you can now move the overlay to all four corners of the screen now, if you didn't like it in the top left-hand corner. And also it now has an IP address section you can enable to display your console's IP address on screen in that same overlay. So that's what's been added there. The other big change is to items flow. There has been an update made there when copying files. So there was an issue with the previous version where if you copied the files in a certain way, using items flow. So if you were copying a game dump, a PS5 game dump from your USB to like the internal storage or an internal M.2 drive from within items flow using the copy option, there could be a situation where it would not give the files the proper permissions in order to read, write and execute those files. So then when you try to load the game from the internal storage after it was copied via items flow, it would not launch. It would just give you a black screen because it did not have the correct permissions. And you could fix this as I showed in one of my previous videos where you could simply just connect on FTP, right click on the folder, go to file permissions and tell it to apply the 777 file permission, which is read, write and execute to all files and subdirectories within that folder. And that would fix the issue, but it's now fixed within items flow itself. If you use this new test build, it will automatically apply the correct permissions to be able to launch the application after it's been copied to the internal storage or an internal M.2 drive. So that issue has now been resolved. Now, speaking of game dumps, we've also seen a release from Echo Stretch of a new PS5 app dumper. It's now on version 1.02 beta. Now the initial version of this just dumped the raw game files, but now it also includes the decryptor also. So it will also decrypt the executables, which is a vital step in actually making any of your game dumps playable uh, on a jailbroken PS5 is you need to not only dump the game files, but also decrypt the executables. So to use this, you just need to connect an XFAT formatted USB drive to the back of your PS5 and then simply load the game. And once you're just sitting in the main menu, you can just inject this payload using a payload injector like Netcat GUI, which is what I'm using to load it. But you can also load this from the homebrew launcher as well, John Tornblum's homebrew launcher, and then that will start the dumping process. And that is all you got to do, wait for it to finish, and then you'll have the game dumped, run the make f self script on it to fix sign the executables, and then that will make that game dump runnable on the PS5, if it is a compatible PS5 game, because there's still a lot of PS5 games that don't work. So, you know, your mileage may vary depending on what game you're dumping, but that is the general idea. So yeah, handy to see that. Of course, you could already dump games within items flow, 
that was always an option. However, you know, this is just an alternative option if, you know, you have some kind of problems dumping your games within items flow. So yeah, anyway, that is basically what is available right there. Now, moving on from that, we also got a new version of the Apollo save tool, which can auto detect your language based on your system language settings. So also has the ability to show save details window for items in the online database. So you press triangle on saves in the online database, it will now give you some additional information there. It's also improved AR Max PS2 save game conversion to PSV. And also there's new cheat codes added for Bleach Rebirth of Souls, plus custom encryption support and custom checksum support for Dark Souls Remastered, Dragon Ball Z, Xenoverse 2 and Resident Evil 4 Remake because some of these games have their own encryption on the saves added on top of, you know, the PS4's normal encryption. So they need specific support within the application to be able to decrypt those games. So that has now been added for those specific titles. So anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.